Hi, I'm Mickey Gousset. Welcome to this video on working with stages in a YAML pipeline. In this video, we are going to look at what a stage is, how you specify stages, and how you can use dependencies to control how your pipeline executes. Please note, some of the concepts around stages depends on whether you are talking about YAML pipelines or classic pipelines. This video is focused on YAML pipelines. What is a stage? To use stages in a YAML pipeline, you must turn on the multi-stage pipeline experience. A stage is a collection of related jobs. Think of stages as major divisions in a pipeline, such as build or deploy. They are a logical boundary where you may want to pause the pipeline and perform some checks or run some tests. Every pipeline has at least one stage, even if you do not explicitly define it. We saw this in previous videos, where the starter YAML pipeline just had steps in it. The one stage and one job were implicitly defined. You can also configure your stages to run in a certain order, i.e. use dependencies between stages to create a dependency graph. You also have the ability to control when a stage will run using approval checks. That won't be covered in this video, but will be shown in a future video. Let's look at a demo of working with stages. So here we are in Azure DevOps in my repo. And in my repo, I've created a folder for this video where I've created multiple different YAML pipeline files. If we look at file 001, implicit stage and job, this is a YAML file where the stage and the job are not defined. So by default, it therefore creates one stage and one job. You can see all I've specified is the trigger, the pool, and the steps I want to run. Now, if I look at 002, this is a pipeline where I'm still not defining a stage. I have one stage, so I have one stage area, but I have two jobs defined. So for this pipeline, you can see I have job A, and then I have job B. So I've defined two jobs, but those two jobs are part of the same stage, which is the one implicit stage that you get by default. But now, let's make this a little more fun. If we look at 003, multiple stages, in this pipeline file, again, I have my trigger and I have my pool, but now I've defined multiple stages. I have stage A and I have stage B. So I've defined two stages and each stage has two jobs. Stage A has job A1 and A2, and then stage B has job B1 and B2. And you can see they just basically write out the job name. So if we queue this and run it, what we should see is multiple stages and then multiple jobs under each stage. By default, Stages run sequentially. So stage A should run and the jobs in A should run, then stage B should run and the jobs in B should run. So let's go over to pipelines where I've defined these pipelines. And let's go look at it for a second just to make sure. So we have our stage two stages and our two jobs under each stage. And let's run 
this pipeline. You can see I have my two stages, A and B, and then I can see the jobs that are running under each, and you can see that the jobs in A are queued while B is waiting because the stages are going to run sequentially. Now, and I can drill in and I can see the different jobs and the stages as they run. Now, the number of jobs running depends on the number of agent pipelines that I have. For this team project, I have 10 pipelines which means I can run 10 jobs concurrently, which is why you saw both of these jobs, A1 and A2, running at the same time, and then you saw B1 and B2 running at the same time. And if we come back, then we can see we have a nice graphical view that shows us each of the stages. We can see the details for each stage that ran, for each job that ran, and we can see the details for each stage that ran. Now, let's talk about dependencies between stages. When you define multiple stages in a pipeline, by default, as we saw here, they run one after the other in the order in which you defined them in the YAML file. So A was defined before B, so stage A ran and its jobs ran, then stage B ran and its jobs ran. Let's go look at another pipeline. Let's look at this next pipeline right here. Now, the only difference between this pipeline and the previous pipeline is that on stage B, we have added this depends on statement. The depends on statement allows you to specify a dependency between different stages or remove a dependency between different stages. By putting an open brace, close brace, or open bracket, close bracket, this removes the implicit dependency on the previous stage, which means that if I have enough pipelines, if I have enough agents, then I could execute stage A and stage B in parallel at the same time. So if we run this, And what you'll see now is they're, not, they're no longer connected, and we'll actually see them get queued up and start up at the same time. So all four jobs will run simultaneously. You can see all four jobs are running simultaneously. Now, brings up an interesting question. By adding in that depends on to that second stage, right here, we removed the dependency on stage A. So therefore, it allowed A and B to run at the same time. What if I come down here and I add a stage C and we remove the depends on statement? Let's change, let's add in the, the jobs for C. What do you think is going to happen? So we have stage A, we have stage B, which has removed its dependency on stage A, on previous stage. And then we have stage C, where we've not defined any dependency statements. So what do you think is going to happen if we save this and then we run it? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Let's run it and see. If we look at the graph, you can see A and B are still going to run simultaneously in parallel, but C gets, ta it gets set to run after B. So by default, the, a stage that doesn't have that depends on set gets tied back to the stage right above it, in this case, stage B, and so it will run after B runs, which we can see is happening right here. And finally, let's look at 
another use of that depends on statement. So if we go back to our pipelines. And we look at this pipeline, then we can see that we've got our multiple stages. So we've got stage A defined. Then we've got stage B. And stage B, you'll notice, has a dependency on stage A finishing. Stage C has the same dependency on stage A finishing. So A will run, then B and C will run because they both rely on stage A. And then we have stage D that relies on both B and C to run and finish. So this is how you define, if you want to define multiple dependencies, this is how you would define multiple dependencies. So we have stage A, then we have stage B and C that, that depend on A, and then we have stage D that depends on B and C. Let's queue this up and see what it looks like. So this is an example of fan out and fan in. We have A that's going to run when it finishes running, B and C will run in parallel, assuming I have enough agents available. And then D will run after B and C both complete. So let's watch this a second and see what happens. So we can see now that A is completed. B and C are both initializing their jobs. And then we can see D is not yet started, but A is completed, B and C is completed, so therefore D should be starting here shortly as soon as an agent becomes available. And we can see that D is now running, and D completed successfully as well. So we've seen examples of pipelines with an implicit stage and job declared example of a pipeline with an implicit stage declared, an example of a pipeline with just multiple stages, an example of a pipeline with multiple stages um, with the depends on statement where we were able to remove the implicit dependency on a previous stage, and then we've seen how we can do fan in and fan out on a pipeline as well, and how we can tie things back between the different stages. In this video, we looked at what a stage is, how you specify stages, and how you can use dependencies to control how your pipeline executes. Thanks for watching.